I kind of did most of my education for free and how it is is that So I started out my um, career as an undergrad mechanical engineer at National Institute of Technology Calicut and then I did a 180 degree shift in my career and went for my master's in computer science so although it seems like an entirely different 180 degree shift in terms of career it was not really a lot for me it was more like filling in the gaps of my education uh, by that i mean from my undergrad i was more or less interested in robotics and robotics involves three parts basically mechanical electrical and the software part of it right so uh, my whole career has been more or less towards that in my undergrad i did the mechanical part when i was working in the industry in asia work for 3 years i transitioned to more of an electrical side as well setting up industrial robots and all of that and then finally i moved into the software side because i kind of realized that the mechanical and the electrical part of industrial robots at that time which was my interest was a lot more mature and all the innovations were coming from the software side so i wanted to specialize more in that and that took me to my masters and from there i got interested in autonomous cars and all that you know have i did my masters from uh, texas a&m university in computer science in terms of gpa i think uh, texas a&m uh, was looking for like somewhere around like about 8.5 for uh students from like tier 1 universities but by that i mean like iit and the like this for tier 2 it was more stringent like they were looking for the higher end of 8.5 or 9 in terms of gps and gre also was i believe the cut off was 318 but that was because there was one candidate who was like exceptionally good in other areas but otherwise i think the average or the median cut off would be somewhere around 320 to 320 My score was 326. You do have to put in your effort and study up all the words and all of that. Fortunately for me, English was good because on the side I've been a poet and an author and all of that. So that really helped me. And the only thing I kind of flaunted was my TOEFL score, which was like 119 out of 120. No, actually I didn't. And I think. especially in texas a&m uh getting a scholarship is probably hard for students who are like probably changing branches and all that but that being said i kind of did most of my education for free and how it is is that uh, as soon as i joined i started scouting out for professors and uh finding places where i could join as a research assistant and all of that i ended up working with one of my professors as a research assistant in the first year and in the second year uh after my internship i ended up continuing the job while i was studying so i was an intern while i was studying for my last semester and so throughout the entire two years span of time i was employed and it might sound different to a lot of uh, students and counter due to that you might actually earn more money doing an ms in the us as compared to doing a job in india if you play your cards right and if you select the right opportunities and hunt for the right opportunities then you can actually even earn equivalent or even more money than your salary in india better over here i was a part of the indian graduate students association but at this my masters i was more focused on career and more towards all of those goals so i didn't deviate much from there Uh, when I was younger, I published a collection of poems. I I did my GRE in the December of seventeen, and then I uh, finished the GRE and TOEFL, and I got the scores. And I gave it a little bit of time before I would use that in my SOPs and all that because I believe that trying to do those things together, as in also giving your GRE and then preparing your SOP, everything together, would have been way more stressful. So that is what I did. I initially took up my GRE and TOEFL and all earlier, and it took me about like three and a half, maybe four months of preparation prior to giving the actual exam. So I booked a date three and a half or four months ahead, and then I finished that. Then afterwards, I did my 
SOP preparation and all of that and then close to the deadline nearly close to the deadline for the fall admit i applied for my texas a&m masters i applied to around like eight universities around the world and uh, i got i believe admits from three or four of them um, yeah so how i did that was like i split up the universities into like the top tier the ones that i wanted to go to and then the lower tier and i believe cost of education was also a very important factor for me so i kind of restricted myself to applying just for one university which was a little costly uh, that was university of southern california and every other university was more or less like a state university like texas a&m university or arizona state university or university of the us a couple of universities in canada and a couple of universities in europe so the my entire this was around eight universities and i would say like usc and texas a&m come on the upper end then i had universities like illinois institute of technology is the lower end and i applied to the entire spectrum so that i was pretty confident that i might get in some more so in canada i believe the challenge was that a lot of universities have a lot of prerequisites especially for me for example i was transitioning from one department to the other from mechanical to computer science so i had to take had a lot of prerequisites that i needed to take and they were very strict about it as compared to the united states universities uh, but that being said university of alberta university of british columbia they do have like really good courses and if you email the admissions coordinator and all and kind of explain your background they might still allow you to consider your application for a masters but they would also have the prerequisite courses that you need to finish prior to your actual start of the masters so you get a visa for canada or europe but that visa would start with you finishing let's say like the last semester of your final year and then you would transition into the masters of your master you know, masters program so i think that computer science isn't for everyone and why what i mean is for example in computer science i feel the competition is pretty high in terms of people uh fighting for jobs for example uh, a lot of people who are not i would say keen on sitting long hours in front of a computer and just studying might not end up choosing computer science because there are a lot of other interesting things you could do for example me being from the mechanical side i can tell you that uh, i enjoy for example hands on graphics and design but that's something that you would probably not get in computer science unless you specialize in ui ux for example in which case it's actually better to go for a masters in design field rather than to a computer science and then plan to enter into ui ux so in those kind of domains i would say unless you're comfortable with spending long hours in front of a computer probably you should consider other branches so the best part of texas a&m in my opinion is the flexibility that they offer in terms of course structuring and i have to say that since my partner for example studied in canada and she doesn't have the same flexibility and a lot of other friends i've talked to they do not have the same level of flexibility in courses when they were in my place for example i could select the courses that i wanted and shuffle around a lot of courses so there are required courses or mandatory courses and then there are electives that you take right so the required courses in texas a&m tend to be comparatively smaller and their availability is almost year long what i mean is that if you miss this course in fall you might find an equivalent or an alternative course to take in spring that would give you the same requirements so that allows you to have a lot of flexibility in terms of courses and that's one of the best things that i found in texas a&m so i got my first job before i completed my masters definitely and that was with nvidia so i joined as an intern they liked my work and then so they kind of offered me to continue as an intern since they couldn't give me a job offer so for a full time job so i did part time during my last semester i continued working with the same team on the same project and as soon as i graduated i just took 
around one month of vacation and then I joined back in the same team. I think thanks to the inflation that has occurred, a lot of stock values have increased, meaning that a lot of companies have a lot of cash which they invest back into getting workforce. So right now is a good time to join. Uh, but keep in mind that this advice might not last for long in case like the feds increase the treasury rates and all of that and the interest rates goes up and the company's stock values fall down. Then you might see a dip in terms of job opportunities. So it's a very dynamic situation and I would recommend you to have like you play your card safe and keep probably Canada or Europe as a backup as well. Uh, don't copy. That's the most important advice that I need to give to Indian students abroad. Uh, here in the US, for example, assignments are considered like holy books or holy grail basically. And you are expected to put in a lot of effort into finishing your assignments and submitting them and doing an original work per se. And in order to do that, if you copy from your classmates or somebody like that, in India, you might get away with it because they are, every, the faculty is expecting the same answer from every student and the same answer is equal to the right answer, right? Whereas in the US, if the faculty sees the same answer from two students, he would think that these two students sort of copied from each other and plagiarism is considered equivalent to a crime in the US and the punishment can go anywhere from getting uh, a semester suspended to all the way to be dismissed and deported back to India. So, yeah, yeah. Please do not copy. That's the most important uh, suggestion that I would say for Indian students per se.